Shalom, shalom, family. We are back at it again. We about to really break it down today. <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to give all honor and praise to the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, who is Jesus, our Hamashiach. Also, um, I represent the walls of Jericho, biblical and historical studies. I also represent Hebrews in the Hood Entertainment. And of course, we are going to have a selection for you guys. And that's what we're going to do right now. So hold on tight. We got a good lesson coming up. And this is a serious one, too. So let's go. Hey, I'm King. Hey, go ahead, man. Go ahead and tell them what we're doing. Oh, man, brother. Real yeah, okay. Tell them what's going on. They shoot in. Where we're crooked. I'm saluting while they letting the troops in. Babylon with simultaneous groups live. Like vagabonds and none can take the truth, kid. Save us, strange arrangements. At the head of the streets, they love and defame us. It's politicians of peace, it is what we're named oh, us. My positions of priests, we all been trained up. Wow, this lion finna be raised up. Our position increases, my position's my thesis. Zion's been parted, not intending to keep her. You see these J in these foreign lands. Can't believe I can stand another sight, but yet it's more in hand. The dog could get another fight, so get the water, man. They do this out of spite, it's the slaughter, man. Call them for delivery, but where's the order, man? Still wander, I can catch them in the woods. Paralyzed tribes, they the curse is all good. They shoot me. Check out the news in the hood, they shoot me. This for the brews in the hood. They still wander, I can catch them in the woods. Paralyzed tribes, they the curse is all good. They shoot me. Check out the news in the hood, they shoot me. This for the brews in the hood. Looking at the state of things, hoping for greater things, like ain't what it really seems. It's all the play of dreams, yeah, we on a losing team, but it's only momentary. He choose the he roots necessary. It's all about the mission, handle this light affliction. But the nation facing got us in the position where we can never prosper, never get in the honor. Face down with us strong, that's how they want us, and we're making it easy. We destroying the sales. If they kill us, and we kill us, none of us slay them. The agenda is moving, yeah, they know. What they doing with one accord, conspires on the Israel ruin. But any weapon form, then it's coming to not. You touch the apple of his eye, now you got your problem. He returned the vision, told the nations are finished. We have the numbers of all flesh, we come to mid. They still wander, I can catch them in the woods. Paralyzed tribes, they the curses all good. They shoot me. Check out the news in the hood, they shoot me. This for the brooms in the hood. They still wander, I can catch them in the woods. Paralyzed tribes, they the curse is all good, they shoot me. Check out the news in the hood, they shoot me. This for the blues in the hood. All right, let's get it started. I always got to open up with a good song from Hebrews in the Hood and Tame for y'all. And pretty much any other of our Israelite brothers doing music out there, preaching that truth through their uh, music. That's also a ministry, brothers and sisters. Just wanted to throw that out there, right? So today what we're going to focus on, I'm not sure if y'all saw my brother, and I'm going to bring this up because um, we decided that we're going to elaborate off of the discussion, dialogue, debate that he had on Tuesday. And one of the things, one of the topics, one of the categories that he was discussing was about the Quran, right? So a lot of people believe that the Quran was a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. The only problem is, brothers and sisters, is that it doesn't line up with the scriptures. It really doesn't. It may seem, you know how the, you know how the devil works, it give you a little truth, but then in the midst of it, he's giving you lies. So if you're not paying attention, it will throw you off. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a full analysis, brothers and sisters, on the Quran and with the scriptures. And we're going to see if the Quran fits with the Bible, right? That's what we're going to see, right? Grace and peace. Shalom to you. Uh. So that's what we're going to see today, right? So. We're going to get some history in here, and then we're going to go into these scriptures with the Quran and then with the Bible, brothers and sisters. We're going to go back and forth, 
And I want y'all to be the judge and see if you think this belongs with the Bible, right? Because to me, it doesn't. It, 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 what's crazy is it's really a waste of time. There's no reason to even go to the Quran if you have the Bible. And, and we're going to get to the point where this was just a vain thing to write down. Now, of course, we're not here to offend anybody purposely, brothers and sisters. We're here to teach and inform our people on the things that's harmful to them or the things that's fruitful to them. And that's what we want. And you you can decide if you want to listen to it or not, brother and sister, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a history book. We're going to start with this. This is a book called The History of God by Karen Armstrong, right? Uh, more specifically, The History of God, The 4,000-Year Quest of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam by Karen Armstrong, right? And we're going to get a back history on Muhammad, right? Because we're going to see if this is even possible for him to be giving oracles and writing. Excuse me, brothers and sisters. Uh, if y'all want to call me, just wait until the lesson is over. I will get right back to you. So once again, we're going to go in here and get some back history to see if this is even lining up with the scriptures, brothers and sisters, right? So we're going to start this on chapter 5, which is page 132. If y'all want to grab this book, this is what it's called, The History of God by Karen Armstrong, right? And of course, you got all these pagan symbols on here. Right, so we know what we're dealing with. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam is all pagan in origin, brothers and sisters, right? And that's what we're gonna look at today. Now, once again, follow me what I'm saying, because you're gonna see some truth in here, but look at the things that are not lining up. And any tiny thing that doesn't line up, brothers and sisters, it does not belong with the Bible, right? It is confusion, right? And God is not the author of confusion. So we're going to start this on page 132, chapter 5, 132, says the unity, the God of Islam, right? Unity, the God of Islam. And it reads, in about the year 610, an Arab merchant of the thriving city of Mecca in the Hejaz, who had never read the Bible and probably never heard of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel had an experience that was uncannily similar to theirs, right? Let's let's see if that's true. We're going to we're going to see if this stuff is true. Every year Muhammad uh Abidin Abdullah, that was his whole name, his real name, a member of the Mecca tribe of Quraysh. So already we're seeing he's not from any of the tribe of the Hebrews, right? Of the Israel he is from a Arab tribe or an Ishmaelite tribe, which we're going to see later, uh, which we're going to see coming up, right? It says he used to take his family to Mount Hera, just outside of the city, to make a spiritual retreat during the month of Ramadan. And this is also shows you that Islam was here before Muhammad, brothers and sisters, right? It was here before Muhammad. That's why he went to Ramadan. That's why he was at the Ramadan, right? Because it was here before him, brothers and sisters, right? Let's keep going. This was quite a common practice among the Arabs of the peninsula. Muhammad would have spent the time praying to the high God of the Arabs. Let's, let's, let's listen to that. The high God of the Arabs and distributing food and alms to the poor who came to visit him during his sacred period. So we just wanted to get where he was from. He was from the Meccan tribe of Karash, which is an Arab tribe, brothers and sisters, a Ishmaelite tribe, not a Israelite tribe. So it already this this uh, 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 disqualifies him from being a person bringing the oracles onto the world from the God of Israel. Right. So he's not talking about the same God, even though they want to make it seem like he's talking about the same God. Right. Uh, let us continue. Now we're going over to page 135. We just want to size everything up. We want to make this as brief as possible, brothers and sisters. So when we get into the lesson, you'll understand why we're doing this, right? So it says, 135, it says, Muhammad was a man of exceptional genius, this opinion, 
Uh, when he died in 632, he had managed to bring nearly all the tribes of Arabia into a new united community, or um, Ahmad. He had brought the Arabs a spirituality that was un, uh, uh, uniquely suited to their own traditions and which unlocked such reserves of power that within a hundred years they had established their own great empire, which stretched from the Himalayas to, Pi the, uh, to the Pyrene, Pyrenees and founded a unique civilization. So what did it say? He brought the Arabs their spirituality. He he didn't bring Israel their spirituality, brothers and sisters, but that's going to, the history of what he did is going to conflict with what he wrote. And that's what we're going to point out, brothers and sisters, right? Let's uh, continue. Yet as Muhammad sat in prayer in the tiny cave at the summit of Mount uh, Hira during his Ramadan retreat in 610, he could not have... Uh, uh, envisaged, uh, envisaged such phenomenal success. Like many of the heirs, Muhammad had come to believe that Allah, the high God of the ancient Arabian pantheon, was name whose namely whose name simply meant the God, because that's what Allah means in Arabic, the God, right? Uh, was identical to the God worshipped by the Jews and the Christians. And we know the Jews and the Christians, they're not worshipping the same God anyway. People think they are, but they're not. So uh, within the Abrahamic religions, brothers and sisters, they're not even worshipping the same God. It was thought they were worshipping the same God. And we're going to get into what origin of Allah came from, brothers and sisters, right? Let us continue. Um, he also believed that only a prophet of this God could solve the problems of his people. But he never believed for one moment that he was going to be that prophet. Indeed, the Arabs were unhappily aware that Allah had never sent them a prophet or a scripture of their own. I wonder why. Because the oracles of God are to the Jews, brothers and sisters, to Israel. And no other nation, we're going to read that as well, right? Uh, let us continue. So, even though he had, even though he had had his shrine in their midst from uh, from time immemorial, by the seventh by the seventh century, most Arabs had come to believe that the Kaaba, the massive cube shaped shrine in the heart of Mecca, which was clearly a great uh, of great antiquity, had originally been dedicated to Allah, even though at present. The, at present, the Nabataean deity Hubal resided there. So, if you go back and you see the origins of Allah, you'll see Alet, which is a moon god, and Hubal. Now, what Allah, uh, what Muhammad did, brothers and sisters, as he brought all of their gods, the Arabs had 360 gods, right? But their primary gods was Hubal, right? Which is where you will get the Kaaba stone when you go um, and they're worshiping the Kaaba stone. It was originally dedicated to Hubal. This is what uh, uh, what you're dealing with, brothers and sisters, when you're dealing with Alash. It was a hermaphrodite god, Alet and Hubal together. They put them together, brothers and sisters, right? Because what Allah, I mean, what um, Muhammad did is that he brought the idea of monotheism, the uh, the idea of the one God religion, to the Arabs, brothers and sisters. But they had 360 gods, right? So this is all very, very confusing, and it's going to show in the text. Let us keep going. All Meccans were fiercely proud of the Kaaba which was the most important holy place in Arabia, right? But of course, we know the real holy place is in Jerusalem. So we want to go back and forth and see, do these two texts fit with each other? I'm going to say no, right? Let us continue. Now we're going to page 136. Now watch this, brothers and sisters. We're going to get into the uh, where the Quran, what it means, and where it came from, right? Uh, 136. There is a story that one day before he had left Mecca to search in the Syria and Iraq for the religion of Abraham, Zod had been standing by the Kaaba. So this is Zod uh, Abinin Amar, which was the uncle 
or which was the uh, second cal uh, caliphate in the Islamic empire, right? Or king, right? Ruler, right? So it says that he had left Mecca in search in Syria and Iraq for the religion of Abraham. Now notice that, brothers and sisters, right? It says Zod had been standing by the Kaaba, leaning against the shrine and telling the Karash, which was the tribe, same tribe that uh, uh, Muhammad came from, who were making the ritual circum, um, circumvallations around it and in the time-honored way. O Karash, by him in whose hand is the soul of Zod, not one of you follows the religion of Abraham but I. Then he added, sadly, O God, if I knew how you wish to be worshipped, I would so worship you, but I do not know. Zod's longing for the divine revelation was fulfilled in Mount Hera in 610 on the seventh night of Ramadan when Muhammad was torn from sleep and, it, and felt himself enveloped by a devastating divine presence. And this divine presence we're going to see is an angel, which he says was Gabriel or who they call Jabril, brothers and sisters, right? So once again, they didn't have any knowledge of God. They didn't have any knowledge of the true and living God, right? And if you look up what Muhammad did, brothers and sisters, he went to Israel first, and then he brought that idea of monotheism or the one God religion to the, Arab, the, to the Arab people, brothers and sisters, right? So this is what he did. They had prophecies and everything saying that this was going to be fulfilled with their people and that Muhammad was that prophet it was fulfilled through, right? So... Once again, when we get into the text, though, it's not going to make sense. Was he going for the Arab people or was he going for Israel? And if he was going for Israel, why do you need the Quran when you have the Bible, right? That doesn't make any sense, right? Let us continue. So it says, um, later he explained this inevitable, uh, inevitable experience in distinctly Arabian terms. He said that an angel had appeared to him and given him a curt command, recite, which is Akra, like the Hebrew prophets who were often reluctant to utter the word of God. Muhammad refused, protesting, I am not a reciter. He is no cabin, one of the uh, ecstatic soothsayers of, and not a reciter. I'm sorry, I'm reading wrong. Ascatic soothsayers of Arabia who claim to recite inspired oracles. But Muhammad said the angel sim uh, Muhammad says the angel simply enveloped him in an overpowering embrace, so that he felt as if all the breath was being squeezed from his body. Just as he felt he could bear it no longer, the angel released him and again commanded him to recite Akra. Again, Muhammad refused, and again the angel embraced him until he felt he had reached the limits of his endurance. Finally, at the end of the third terrifying embrace, Muhammad found the first words of the new scripture pouring from his mouth. Recite in the name of thy sustainer, who, who has created, created man out of the germ cell. Recite, for thy sustainer is the most bountiful, one who has taught man to use the use of a pen taught him what he did not know. The word of God had been spoken for the first time in the Arabic language, and this scripture would ultimately be called the Quran, the recitation. That's what the Quran is, the recitation. What are you reciting, though, brothers and sisters? Are you teaching the law, statutes, and commandments? Right? Because that's what you should be reciting if you are with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or with, uh, in this particular uh, case, with them, the God of Abraham, which is the God of Israel. Not Hubal, brothers and sisters. Not Alet, brothers and sisters. Not a hermaphrodite God. That doesn't make any sense, right? So, let us continue. Now we're going to get into the scriptures, brothers and sisters. Right? So we got the side history. We see what tribe he came from. So that automatically disqualifies him from having the oracles of God. He was not from the 12 tribes. He was from the Quarash uh, 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 tribe, the Meccan tribe, which is an Arab tribe, brothers and sisters, right? So right again, that automatically disqualifies him. Now, why wouldn't you just go to Israel to get the Torah and leave it at that? There is no reason for you to make another book 
which is confusion. And we're going to we're going to see that as we get into this. Right. But we're going to start with the scriptures first. So now let us go to Isaiah, the eighth chapter. Isaiah, the eighth chapter. <clears throat> Isaiah, the eighth chapter. And we're going to start at verse 16. Isaiah, the eighth chapter, and we are going to start at verse 16. Isaiah 8 and verse 16. And verse 16 reads, bind up the testimonies, seal the law among my disciples. Now, we're already, y'all already know what we're getting to, right? And to the law and to the testimony, brothers and sisters, you have to speak from this. So he said, bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. That's all you needed, the law or the Torah, right? And the testimonies, which is the gospels, brothers and sisters, that's all you need. You don't need the Quran, right? And we're going to see this, right? Verse 17, and I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelt in Mount Zion, not Mecca, Mount Zion, right? So we're already seeing that there is a difference here, brothers and sisters, right? This is, this is going to be going into Mecca or the, or the Arabian or the Arab God. And this is dealing with the God of Israel, which they try to make it seem like he's the same God, brothers and sisters. But like I said, we're going to see if that's true. Verse 19. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mut and that mutter should not a people seek unto their God for the living and to the dead. Verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And we're going to, now this really counts when we say this, brothers and sisters, because we're bringing another text on the scene that they're saying is from the God of Israel, right? So if you don't got the law and the testimony, the Old and New Testament, there is no light in you, brothers and sisters. Right. So now let's go to the Quran. Let's get into this. Right. Let's go to the Quran. If you have one, you can follow along. But if you don't, just just uh, pay attention. Right. So we're going to start this in what they call Surah or also Quran 5 and 15, brothers and sisters. Now watch this. He said this was for the Arab people. <laughs> This is for the Arab people, right? So why is this being said? Surah 5 and 15. It says, O people of the book. This is talking about Israelites, brothers and sisters, right? O people of the book. Our messenger, Muhammad. Now, y'all heard what tribe he coming from. He's coming from the Arab tribe, brothers and sisters, a Meccan tribe of Karash. That's what he's coming from. So why is the this Muhammad being sent to the children of Israel? Right? So he says, O oh, people of the book, our messenger Muhammad has come to you now, making it known to you much what you used to hide in the book, talking about this, talking about the Torah, right? And by passing much that is now not necessary... Right. By passing much that is now not necessary, there has come to you a new light from Allah and a very clear book, the Quran. So this is so the Quran, according to according to the Quran, this is more clear than the scriptures. Right. And then it also says uh, um, uh, he said he's making it known to you much what you used to hide in the book and by passing much that is now not necessary. Why is it not necessary? Because you have a new light, which is the Quran. Is this in the Bible, brothers and sisters? Is that in the Bible? That is not in the Bible. It says from the law and the testimony, if it speak not according to this word, it is become it is because there is no light in you. But this is saying that this is not necessary because the Quran is the new light. 
That don't make any sense, brothers and sisters. So what he's saying is this is a replacement of this. The book is saying that. It don't matter. It does not matter what all these other people who are in this religion say according to their church, according to their um, um the synagogues that they go into, brothers and sisters. The book is saying that this is not necessary because we have a new light, which is the Quran. But who is it saying it to? It's saying it to the children of Israel. It, yes, it's saying that it's more clear. It's very clear as if this is not clear, right? Now watch this. We're going to get into more of this, right? Verse 16, with this book, Allah guides all those who seek his good pleasure towards the ways of peace and safety, talking about the Quran, and he leads them out of darkness and by his will to light. And he guides them to a straight path. Now watch this. We all know who Jesus, that Jesus is the God of Israel. Now watch what it's saying. Truly in blasphemy are those who say that Allah is the Messiah. Now, now, brothers and sisters, if we know that Allah is supposed to be the God of Israel, the Quran separates Jesus and the God of Israel as if they're not the same person. Now, we know that our Old Testament Hebrews don't believe that, but I'm speaking to the Messianic people, the Christians, the Messianic Israelites. This is saying that it is blasphemy to say that Jesus is Allah or the God of Israel. Y'all see that? Y'all see how backwards that is? So it says, Blasphemy of those who say that Allah is the Messiah Christ, the son of Mary, Miriam, which is Mary. Say to them, who then has even the least power against Allah? If his will was to destroy the Messiah Christ and the son of Miriam, his mother and all, everyone that is on the earth. And to Allah belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth and all that is between. Uh, between. He, Allah, creates whatever he pleases for Allah is able to do all things. That's not the worst of it, brothers and sisters. Let's keep going. Let's skip down to verse 41 now. Verse 41. It says, O messenger, Muhammad, do not let those people make you sad, those who go fasting and the others towards disbelief, whether it be among those who say we believe with their lips, but whose hearts have no faith. Or is um, or it be among the Jews, men who will listen to any lie, men who will listen even to others who have never even come to you. They change words from their right times and from their right places. They say, if you are given this, take it. But if not, be, be aware. If anyone's trial is intended by Allah, you, O prophet. So it's making him, it's making um, 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 it is making Allah the main prophet in this discussion, right? Because if y'all look at it, it's capitalizing him as O prophet. He's the prophet. He is the messenger. Why is he the messenger to the children of Israel? <laughs> Why is this Arab a messenger to the children of Israel, right? Um, let us keep going. It is not Allah's will to purify their hearts. I'm sorry, I'm going too fast. If anyone's trial is intended by Allah, oh, you, O oh prophet, have no authority in the least over him to protect from Allah. For such people, it is not Allah's will to purify their hearts. For them, there is disgrace in this world and a severe punishment in the hereafter. Now, if you read in the Torah, the law and the testimony, the God of Israel says that he does, has no pleasure in destroying the wicked, right? But that's not what this says, brothers and sisters. Now we're seeing that there's a totally different I, uh, ideology in these books that have, that have similarities, but it should be all the same if this is coming from the God of Israel, right? Let us keep going. Um. They are fond to listening to lies and consuming anything that is forbidden. If they come to you, either judge between them or refuse to in, uh, interfere. If you refuse, they cannot harm you in the least. If you judge, judge with justice between them. 
Surely Allah loves those who judge with justice. Here we go. Verse 43. But why do they come to you for decision? Now what? Watch this, brothers and sisters. It says, why do they, the children of people, the children of Israel, the people of the book, why do they come to you for decision when they have their own Torah before them? That's in the book. <laughs> That's in the book, brothers and sisters. Now, why would you go to the message of Muhammad when you have your own Torah with you? That is a, that's a true statement, but that contradicts the relevance of why this was created. You already have the Torah. You already have the instructions of God. So what is the use of having this book? There is no use, right? So it says, in there is the plain commandment of Allah. So now Allah has given the Torah, but then he also said, I've given a new light, which was the Quran. So which one is it? Do we so and then it says that the Torah was not necessary because you have this new light. But now why do you come to me? Or uh, 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 why do you come to the prophet when you have the Torah? You see how all this is, it's everywhere, brothers and sisters. It don't make sense that it's everywhere, right? It says, yet even after that, they would turn away, for they are not really the people of faith. Talking to Israel. Now, just because you're being disobedient, it does not mean you're not the people of faith. You're not the people of God, brothers and sisters, right? You are still the children of Israel, and yes, he wants to purify you. Now, if you don't want to be purified, that is the decision that you're making. But this saying that Allah is not concerned with purifying them, right? So we got we to gotta make sure we can see Satan's devices even when he's throwing truth out there, right? Verse 44, verily it was we who sent down the Torah to Moses. We? <laughs> You just stated that we all know if we're saying we, we could go back to Genesis, the first chapter where it says, let us make man in our image. We know that that is the son talking to the father. We know that Elohim is a uniplural word, but it has two members in it, the father and the son. Right. We know that the son is Jesus. Right. So this is saying that Jesus is not Allah or the God of Israel, or Elohim, which he is. And it is a blasphemy to say he is. But this is the new light. This is the new light saying that? No. Th 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 <laughs> we're seeing, we're going to go and see that the Bible and this will contradict each other, brothers and sisters, right? So it says, Verily, it was we who sent down the Torah to Moses. There was guidance and light in it. By its teachings, the Jews had been judged by the prophets who bowed to Allah's will in submission by the rabbis and by the doctors of Judaic law because the protection of Allah's book was given to them and they were witnesses to it, right? But why all of a sudden you knock off the children of Israel and now you're giving, you're giving oracles, you're saying that the angel gave um, 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 your, the angel gave a Arab the oracles to be the messenger to the people of the book, which is the Israelites. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? We're going to, we're going to continue to see if that makes sense, right? So it says, therefore, do not fear men, but fear me and do not sell my signs for a low price. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah has made clear they are no better than disbelievers. And we ordain in there for them life for life, eye for eye, nose for nose, ear for ear, tooth for tooth, and wounds equal for equal. But if anyone forgives the revenge of by the way of charity, it is an act of peace for himself. That's true, right? Let's keep going. The truth is going to get mixed in, right? And if any fail to judge by the light of what Allah has made clear, they are no better than wrongdoers. Here we go. Now, this, this is a slap in the face to Sunday Christians because the Old Testament says that the law was not done away with. The New Testament doesn't say the law was done away with. 
And let's see, all the Abrahamic religions agree that you have to keep the Torah, right? So we're going we're gonna to show with all the Abraham, once again, we got the Torah, we got the, New, uh, we got the Old Testament, we got the New Testament, and the Quran. These are all fitting within the Abrahamic faith. So if you consider yourself to be part of any Abrahamic faith, brothers and sisters, you have to keep the Torah. Let's see the Quran actually say that, which is true, right? Um, verse 46. And in their footsteps, as if to follow them, we sent Isa, which is Jesus, the Arabic word for Jesus, the son of Miriam, Mary, restating the Torah that had come before him. We sent him the gospel to him. Now, brothers and sisters, if the we is sending it to the Jesus and he ain't part of the we, what is the we, brothers and sisters? Right? So they'll sit here and tell you it's to show personification of, of the highest, the, uh, of, uh, the royalty of Allah by saying we. Right? So we is not plural. It just means that's how valuable or how high of a level that Allah is on. We. But when you see, let us make man in our image within the, 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 the the Bible, that is actually a us. That is actually a we. You can look this stuff up. But they're trying to be slick, brothers and sisters, right? So the we, there's a we there. We sent, we sent the Torah or we sent to the gospel to Jesus. But Jesus is not part of the we. Y'all see what I'm saying? Let's continue. Um, so he restating the Torah, I want to make that clear. That the Quran even said that Jesus came to restate the Torah. And even in the prophecy of Daniel, he was going to confirm the covenant with many for one week. His ministry was to restate the Torah. So they got that right, right? Which the Sunday, the traditional Christians said was done away with, right? So they got that right. We sent the gospel to him. There was guidance and light in it and confirmation of Torah that had come before him. A guidance and a warning to those who fear Allah. So well, we're going to see that the Quran, it contradicts the Torah. So if you listen fully to the Quran, brothers and sisters, you are going to go against the Torah. Meaning that it is killing your salvation. We're going to see that, right? Just keep paying attention. Um, verse 47. Let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has made clear in there. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah has made clear, they are no better than those who rebel. To you, O prophet, talking about, now it's going back to uh, Muhammad. To you, O prophet, we sent the book, the Quran, and truth confirming the scriptures that came before it. Really? It said that it, listen to what it's proclaiming, brothers and sisters. It says that the Quran is there to confirm the scriptures that came before it and guarding it in a safety. So judge between them, those who come to you by what Allah has revealed and do not follow their useless wishes going away from uh, the truth that has come to you. To each of the prophets among you were prescribed a law as in Torah and gospel, right? And an open way. If Allah had so willed, he would have made you all a single people. But his plan is to test you in what he has given you. So work hard as if you are in a race and all the good deeds. The goal for all of you is Allah. It is he who will show you the truth of the matters in which you disagree. Now, once again, Jesus is not part of the we, the uniplural word, brothers and sisters, right? But it's saying that the book, the Quran, was given to who? The prophet which was Muhammad. But the history said that Muhammad was bringing this to the Arabian people. So why is he talking about Israel? Why is, uh, uh, why is Muhammad in this being sent to Israel? 
when Israel should be sent to Israel, right? He had to go to Israel, brothers and sisters, to learn what this was, to even write this. And then he's saying that the angel came to him. So all these generation of Israelites, that angel is just going to miss him and come to this Arab. So you're going to break protocol one time. This has happened that, that you don't see no other text where this has happened to anybody else after Muhammad. And this hasn't happened to anyone else before Muhammad. He's just special. Right. But it was supposed to be to the Arabian people. But yet in here, he's talking to the children of Israel. Right. So that's automatically backwards, brothers and sisters. Right. Let us continue. Now we're going to skip down to verse 65. Verse 65. He's constantly talking to the children of Israel, right? Verse 65. If the people of the book had only believed and been righteous, we should indeed have removed their sin and admitted them to the garden of happiness. If they had only truly followed the Torah and the gospel and all the revelation that was sent to them from their Lord, they would have enjoyed happiness and satisfaction from all directions. From among them, there is a party on the right path, but many of them follow the path of evil. So if it's saying if they had only truthfully followed the Torah and the gospel, what is the need for the Quran? What is the, why is it necessary to have the Quran if you have the Torah and the gospel, if you have the law and the testimony? What is it? A ne why is it necessary to have this? But this is also said that that is not necessary because we have a new light, the Quran or the recitation. Right now, this is what you're getting from this book, brothers and sisters. Right. It's in this book. We're not talking about tradition of people's sex. It is in the book. Right. Let us keep going. O messenger, verse 67, O messenger, Muhammad, proclaim the message which has been sent to you from your Lord. It's almost like they separate the two, right? So if you separate the two, that means that this is a whole different God. And we just read where that God come from. You got Alet and Hubal, brothers and sisters, who they created together. That's why you have them saying that it's a hermaphrodite God. Right? Allah is a hermaphrodite God, which they want to say is the God of Israel. Right? Let us continue. If you did not, if you did not, you would have conveyed and made clear his message. And Allah will defend you from men who intend to harm you. Allah does not help and guide those who reject faith. Say, O people of the book. <clears throat> you have no ground to stand on unless you truly stand by the Torah, the Gospels, and all of the message that has come to you from your Lord. Said it again. It is the same message that comes to you from your Lord that increases in most of them their long-lasting revolt and lies meant against Allah. But you do not feel sorry for these people without faith. Now, do you all see how when, when, when the great tribulation come and you got all the religions that come together, the main religions that's going to come together, brothers and sisters, is the Christians, the Catholics, the Jews, and the Muslims. You already see that Catholicism means universal. So they're going to uh, universally combine with everybody, right? They have to. They're spearheading it. But this is what shows you why you saw the heads of the Muslims signing these treaties with the Pope and the rabbis of Judaism, right? Let's look at this. This will give you an understanding of why it's going to be like this in the Great Tribulation, right? So, verse 69. Surely those who believe in the Quran and those who follow the Judaic Jewish scriptures or the Torah and the Sabaeans and the Christians, right, so now, if you follow all three of them, which you cannot follow simultaneously, brothers and sisters, you cannot. 
Anyone who believe in Allah in the last day and people who work towards righteousness upon them, there shall be no fear and they shall not be in pain. So when y'all see these entities come together, brothers and sisters, you will know why according to the text. Because a Jew, a Jew, a Christian, and a Muslim can all be in the same um, 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 uh, pantheon. They can all be in the same pantheon. That's the that's the purpose of me saying that, brothers and sisters, right? Verse 70, are we going right back? We took the promise from the children of Israel and sent them messengers. Every time a messenger came to them with what they themselves did not want, some of these messengers they called liars, only acting as messengers, and some they would even kill. They thought there would be no trial or punishment for their actions. So they became blind and deaf, not to see or to hear about their own actions, yet Allah in mercy turned to them. Even after that, many of them became blind and deaf, but Allah sees well all that they do. Here it goes again, brothers and sisters, right? Verse 72. They surely lie against Allah. Those who say Allah is the Messiah Christ, the son of Miriam, Mary, but the Messiah Christ himself said, wait a minute. So Allah is not the Messiah Christ, but the Messiah Christ said himself. Let's see what he said. Um, O children of Israel, worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Verily, whoever joins other gods with Allah, Allah will forbid him the garden and the fire will be, be his home. For the wrongdoers, there will be no one to help. That is not in the Bible, brothers and sisters, especially not that garden, right? But this was Christ. If you try, They're trying to mimic what's in the Bible. When Christ said something similar to that, he was talking about the Father. But what you got to understand is that he's still Elohim. He is still part of the Godhead. He just knows the Father is above him. But this is saying that Christ is not even the Messiah. I mean, Allah, period. Right? And Allah is supposed to be a derivative of Elohim. Right? So it's backwards, brothers and sisters. And we're going to get into um, the more details coming up. Right? Verse 73. They surely lie against Allah, those who say Allah is one of the three in the Trinity. Oh, my goodness. Now we're discussing this. That this does not line up with the Sunday Christians, but it's saying that all the Christians, the Jews, and the Muslims, they can all come together in one pantheon. But how? How? And then you got to go back to the Torah so that you can clear everything up. But then again, if you want to make things really clear, come to the Quran. You see how confusing that is, brothers and sisters? That is confusion. We know that God is not the author of confusion, brothers and sisters. He's not the author of confusion, right? Let us continue. There is no God except one Allah. If they do not stop themselves from their word of lies, a painful penalty will surely fall upon the liars among them. Why do they not turn to Allah and seek his forgiveness? For Allah is one forgiving and most merciful. The Messiah Christ, the son of Miriam, Mary, was no more than a messenger. Y'all see that? Now it's really showing you he's not part of that Elohim. He's not part of the Godhead, right, at all. And there were many messengers that have passed away before him. So it's just making him one of the regular messengers, even though it says he's the Messiah. <laughs> the Messiah. I want to point that out. It says that he's the Messiah because you got Hebrews that will say a Messiah meaning an anointed one. A king could be a messiah. A priest could be a messiah, according to these people. But this says the messiah. But you're putting him on the same level as the messengers that came before him, and then you're putting Muhammad above him. Right? So this don't make some sense. So it just says that the messiah Christ was just a messenger, and many messengers have passed away before him. His mother was a woman of truth, they both have to eat their daily food, see how Allah does make his signs clear to them, yet see in what ways they are misguided far from the truth. Now, 
We're going to stop right there with that one. That was Surah 5, 15 to 17, 41 through 48, and 65 through 75. Now, let us go see if Christ himself said that, if he agrees with that, right? Let's go to Luke, the 24th chapter. Luke, the 24th chapter. Now, y'all see what it just said about our Messiah, right? Y'all see what it made it seem, uh, what it said about the messenger Muhammad. Y'all see that it's telling you that if, uh, if you want things to be very clear, go back to what? The Torah and the Gospels, the law and the testimony, right? So let's see from the law and the testimony if it actually agrees. Luke 24 and 44. Luke 24 and verse 44. Luke 24 and verse, excuse me, verse 44. And verse 44 reads, <clears throat> and he said unto them, these are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, talking to his disciples, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, right? Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture and said unto them, thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That is what the Bible, the gospel say, which this is telling you to go back to, right? But this saying that he was just a messenger, he wasn't Allah, or he wasn't Elohim, the God, he wasn't a part of the Godhead, he was just a messenger, just like all the messengers that came before him, right? Now, all those messengers that came all the way down to the uh, uh, seventh century, now all of a sudden, the messenger has become an uh, Arab. Y'all see how that, that works? If you really have understanding, it took them that long to choose a heathen for the messenger to the Israelites, which you see in here. But then the message is not even the same, brothers and sisters, right? So this is what Christ said in um in Luke, in Luke the 24th chapter. He said that the Torah, the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, they were written concerning him. Now, let's go see that. Let's go to Exodus, the third chapter, because we're going to see what he proclaimed, which the Quran is saying he wasn't, he wasn't. He proclaimed that he was the I am of all generations, right? He proclaimed that the prophecies were concerning him. So why would the Quran say what we just read, brothers and sisters? Exodus, the third chapter. Exodus, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse 13. Shalom to all that's just now tuning in. Shalom to you. Exodus, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse 13. Exodus, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse 13. Now, once again, it's showing you, brothers and sisters, this will be showing you that this says that there is one God. And it's not talking about the Godhead, even though it has we in there. Because once again, you can ask you can ask a Muslim that knows what he's talking about or somewhat knows what he's talking about. Is the we actually talking about a plurality, a duality, plurality, a plurality, right? Is it talking in plural tense? right? And they will say no. So what is this we doing there? That is confusing, brothers and sisters, right? But we know the we is really the Godhead, which has two members in it, right? Just like I stated once again, that if you go to Genesis, it said, let us make man in our image. But we will say that that is the son talking to the father, the Godhead, right? Exodus 3 and verse 13. Exodus 3 and verse 13. Now, what, remember, Allah is supposed to be the God of Israel, brothers and sisters, right? Verse 13, and Moses said unto God, 
Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. So we know we're dealing with the God of Israel, I am, right? He is the I am of all generations, meaning that he is, he was in the pre, uh, past, he's in the present, and he's also in the future, right? Verse 15, and God said moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. So we know it's got to be talking about that because this is who the God of Israel sent the Torah to Moses. And it says in the Quran that Allah sent the Torah to Moses. So we know we're talking about the same thing, right? But then it separates Jesus from the God of Israel. I want y'all to pay, just pay attention to every little detail, right? Now, let's go to Isaiah, the 48th chapter. Isaiah, the 48th chapter, the law and the testimony. This is what we're going to uh, use, brothers and sisters, the law and the testimony. Isaiah 48, and we are going to start at verse um, 12. Isaiah 48, and we are going to start at verse 12. Isaiah 48 and verse 12. And verse 12 reads, hearken unto me, O Jacob, in Israel, my call, I am he, I am the first, I am also the last. That sounds familiar, right, brothers and sisters? Let's go confirm who also said that, because it's the God of Israel saying this, right? Let's go confirm who said that. Let's go to Revelations, the 22nd chapter. It says, I am the first, I am also the last, right? Revelations 22 and verse 13. Peace to you. Peace to you, sis. Revelations uh, 22 and verse 13. Revelations 22 and verse 13. The law and the testimony. Exactly. Two or three witnesses. Right? So we went to Isaiah. Now we go into Revelations. Re uh, Revelations 22 and verse 13. And verse 13 reads, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So this is Jesus speaking. He is showing you he has the same title as the God of Israel. But the Quran says the two are different. Y'all see that? It's obvious that these are not the same books, not talking about the same God. And we showed in the history who they were, Alet and Hubal. That's who they were, and they were to gods to the Arabian people. But the Quran seems to mostly be dealing with the people of the book, the people of the Torah and the Gospels, the Israelites, brothers and sisters, right? Let's go back to Isaiah 48. So we just want to uh, we just want to see that you have uh, 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 the God of Israel saying he's the first and the last, and then Jesus said he was the first and the last, right? Isaiah 48 and 13, we're going back to Isaiah 48 and verse 13. And verse 13 reads, My hand also have laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand have spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. All ye, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, skip down to verse 15. Verse 15. And verse 15 reads, I, even I, have spoken. Yea, I have called him, and I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Talking about Israel. Verse 16, come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. This is also another connotation of it being, of him being the I am. I am is saying this, brothers and sisters, the God of Israel saying this, the one that said he was the first and the last, same as Jesus saying he's the first and the last. Could they be the same person? Let's see. 
uh, verse 16, in the uh, middle of the verse 16, and now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. You see what I'm saying? Now the, the God of Israel is saying that the Lord God has sent him. The one that said he was the first and the last. The one that says that his hand have laid the foundation of the earth and his right hand have spanned the heavens. He said that the Lord God and his spirit have sent him. So we got to now we got to deal with the fact that if this is not if this is not showing that Elohim is a uniplural word, brothers and sisters, then that means this is this it's disregarding Jesus as Elohim, brothers and sisters, and that's not good for a true believer, because we know that the God of Israel and Jesus is one and the same, right? Verse 17, thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. And we are, uh, are understanding that he's also the Holy One of Israel. I wanted to show that, right? So the Holy One of Israel, which is the God of Israel, is Jesus. Now let's go see Jesus actually proclaiming that, brothers and sisters. Let's go to John 5. John, the fifth chapter, the law and the testimony, right? If you don't speak according to that, it is because there is no light in you. But the, uh, but the Quran says that it is the new light. It says Allah brought the Quran as the new light and that this is no longer necessary. But then again, if you really want to understand and go back to the Torah and the Gospels. You see, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's funny to me, brothers and sisters. John, the fifth chapter. John, the fifth chapter, and we're going to start at verse um, um, 36. John, the fifth chapter, and we're going to start at verse 36. John, the fifth chapter, and verse 36. Now, let's go and see what Jesus said concerning who was speaking in the Old Testament, right? John uh, 5 and verse 36. And verse 36 reads, but I have a greater witness than that of John for the works which the father have given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the father have sent me and the father himself, which have sent me have borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. So Allah cannot be the father, brothers and sisters. Unless you're putting him in the Godhead. He cannot be the father, brothers and sisters, right? Because Allah is pointing back to the one that gave the Torah to Moses, which is the God of Israel. But Jesus, who the Quran said is just a messenger, his message was that ye have neither heard the voice of the father at any time, nor seen his shape. Verse 38, and ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he have sent him, ye believe not, right? Because God of Israel said that the Lord God have sent me. Christ is saying that you have never seen the Father at any time nor seen his shape, and that the Father have sent him, right? Remember, this is the gospel, right? And the Quran attests to the gospel. So we're seeing that the gospel is going against the Quran, right? Verse 39, search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The scriptures, according to Christ, testify of him. So how is he just a messenger, right? Then he said that he, he is coming for the remissions of sins, brothers and sisters. That's not just a messenger. He is dying for our sins, brothers and sisters, right? Let us continue now. Let's go see the ultimate of him proclaiming that he's I am, right? John the 8th chapter. John the 8th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 51. John the 8th chapter, and we are going to start at verse 51. John 8 and verse 51. And verse 51 reads, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. 
Then the Jews unto him, then the Jews, then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead in the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste death, never taste of death. I want to make this uh, disclaimer, brothers and sisters, right? If Christ is not the Holy One of Israel, he cannot just be a messenger. He's a blasphemer. He's a blasphemer. Remember, I made that uh, a lesson, the Holy One of Israel or the unholy blasphemer, because he was, he was declaring he was the I am. Right. But they're trying to say that he wasn't doing that, that he was just a messenger and that he made Allah higher than him. He made the father higher than him, brothers and sisters. But he is also showing you he's part of the excuse me. He's part of the Godhead. He's part of Elohim. Right. Let us continue. Um, Where am I? Oh, OK. Verse 53. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Now, of course, he's not just, if they're reacting to him like that, brothers and sisters, he's not just a messenger. He's not just coming to confirm the Torah. It is deeper than that. If the Jews are at him like that, it's deeper than what the Quran trying to say he is, right? Verse 50, uh, verse 54. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honors me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but if I know him, and if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. <laughs> That's bold, right? If I say I know him, I should be a liar like you, right? Uh, but I know him. <clears throat> but I know him and keep his sayings. Watch what Christ said. Verse 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? So we know this is deeper than him just being a messenger, brothers and sisters, right? Let's see what his response was. Verse 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. So that is the connotation of him proclaiming that he is the I am of all generations. He also said that you've never seen, heard the father at any time, nor seen his shape. So who was that speaking in the Old Testament? He's proclaiming that was him speaking, brothers and sisters, that he is the I am of all generations. He is the first and the last. That's coming out of his mouth, brothers and sisters, right? So we want we want to make we want to make put emphasis on the fact that these words are coming out of Christ's mouth versus what the Quran said Christ said or who the Quran said Christ is, right? And that he came to confirm the Torah and the Gospels. Where the God in the Gospels he's saying he's I am, but you're saying that he's not. So that's a contradiction, brothers and sisters, right? That is a contradiction. Now, let us continue. Let's go to Psalms, the second chapter. We want to see that the law and the testimony is confirming that he is that person. He is I am, brothers and sisters, right? Psalms, one, uh, Psalms, the second chapter. Psalms, the second chapter, and we are going to start at verse 1. Psalms, the second chapter, and we are going to start at verse 1. Psalms 2 and verse 1. And verse 1 reads, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the root the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us, right? So, brothers and sisters, this is always the plan from the other nations, including this book, right? It is used to do this same thing, brothers and sisters, because it's, it does not belong here, right? Let us keep uh, going. Let's skip down to verse 6. Verse 6, it said, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. The holy hill is in Zion, not in Mecca, right? Verse 7. I will declare and decree, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, 
This day have I begotten thee. Jesus talking about the Father, brothers and sisters, right? Let's confirm it. Let's skip down to verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, right? Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Put their trust in who, brothers and sisters? The Son, who is part of the Elohim Godhead family, brothers and sisters, right? The one of the two that's in the uh, Godhead, brothers and sisters. The, the Quran don't say that, though, right? The, the Quran is separating him from the Godhead, right? And we're going to get into the Quran going against the Torah. We're going to see that in a minute, right? But it says, kiss the son, lest he be angry and perish, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. So we see that that's in the law, right? Let us go confirm that in the testimony, right? Let's go to 1 John, the second chapter. 1 John, the second chapter. It says, put your trust in the Son. You already know the Father is there. Nobody denies that the Father should be reverenced as the Most High. But now you have the Son there. According In, in the Old Testament, brothers and sisters, we want to point that out. Now let's go to 1 John, the New Testament. 1 John, the, first, uh, the second chapter. 1 John, the second chapter, and we're going to start at verse um, 22. 1 John, the second chapter, and we're going to start at verse 22. 1 John, one, 1 John 2 and verse 22. Now watch this. Remember what the Quran said, right? He was just a messenger, that it was blasphemy to say that he was Allah or part of the Elohim. Uh, Godhead, right? Verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son, brothers and sisters. You, if you deny both, you're Antichrist, right? Whoso, uh, verse 23. Whosoever denieth the Son, the, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledge the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Was the Quran in the beginning, brothers and sisters? No, because as you stated with the history, this wasn't this didn't come on the scene until the seventh century AD. Right? That's not the beginning. Right? That is not the beginning. And then the Quran denounces the son. It puts the son as just a messenger. Right? But the gospels say that if you, uh, uh, the gospels say, who is a liar but he that denieth Jesus the Christ, he is antichrist that denieth the father and the son. Whosoever denieth the son, the same have not the father, brothers and sisters. So if you deny Jesus as the son, right? If you deny Jesus as the God of Israel, as I am, you don't have the father. So if you read in the Quran and just relying on the Quran, you don't have the father and the son, brothers and sisters. So no, it does not fit with the scriptures. It does not fit with the scriptures. Let's confirm that. Let's go to 2 John. 2 John, the first chapter, and we're going to read verse 9. 2 John, the first chapter, and we're going to read verse 9. 2 John, the first chapter, and verse 9. And verse 9 reads, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ have not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he have both the Father and the Son. Said it again, brothers and sisters. If you, if you abide in the doctrine of Christ, you have both the Father and the Son. But the doctrine of Christ is the Torah and the Gospels, brothers and sisters. Right? Which this is saying, it's not, it's not saying the same thing, brothers and sisters. 
right? So we got to come to the terms that when you go out there and you 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 um preaching to people that are part of Islam and they're trying to say that these are the, the, the same God, they're not, brothers and sisters. They're not. They are not. By history, by the text itself, by the text itself, they're not the same God, brothers and sisters, right? So now we're gonna go back to the Quran. We're gonna keep going on and on with this until we get to the end, right? So we're now we're gonna start this. At Surah, the 45th chapter. Surah, the 45th chapter. Now watch this. Surah, the 45th chapter, and we are going to start at verse 16. Surah, the 45th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 15. Verse 15 reads, Whosoever does, whosoever does, I'm sorry, verse 16, verse 16. And indeed, we gave the children of Israel the book. It said it again, right? It's saying it all over the book. We gave the children of Israel the book, the Torah, the, uh, uh, which is the Old Testament, the Torah, the scriptures, the Jewish law, and understanding and prophethood. So the prophethood or the priesthood was given to the children of Israel. But how did Muhammad get it? Right? So how did Muhammad get it? That don't make sense. Watch. And we gave them good and pure things for living, and we chose them above the nations. Ain't that what the uh, the Torah say? That we ch we chose. Now I'm saying Allah chose them above the nations. We're going to see if this is consistent with the God of Israel. Would he wait all the way to the 7th century and then change what he does? We, we know that this God don't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and in the future, brothers and sisters, right? So would he change his protocol by giving the oracles to a heathen, to an Arab, not a Israelite, right? Verse 17, and we gave them clear signs and matters dealing with religion, and it was after knowledge had been given to them that they split into groups through deep envy amongst themselves, surely your Lord will judge between them on the day of resurrection and judgment as to those matters in which they had made up differences among themselves, right? So once again, the Quran says that we gave the Torah to the children of Israel and we, uh, 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 we chose them above all the nations. We gave them understanding and prophethood was given to the children of Israel. Let's now go to the Bible. Let's go to the scriptures. Let's go to the Torah. It says the Torah, right? Let's go to Exodus, the 19th chapter. Let's go to Exodus, the 19th chapter. Exodus 19, and we're going to start at verse 3. Exodus, the 19th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 3. Exodus 19, oops, and Exodus 19 and verse 3. Exodus 19 and verse 3. And verse 3 reads, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say unto the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto, uh, you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. That is what the Quran said, right? That uh, Allah, we... You know what I'm saying? The confusing that it is. We gave the children of Israel the Torah, gave them the understanding and prophethood, and we chose them above all the nations. That is in the Arabs' book, brothers and sisters. Just to let you know, I have the, the, the Quran. That is in their book that the children of Israel were chosen above all nations. Right? So we're going to see if According to the Torah, 
could a heathen have gotten the oracles of God and given it back to the Israelites? Right? We're going to see if that if that's possible. Verse 5. Now, therefore, if you will, oh, I'm sorry, verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now, here's a problem, brothers and sisters. He made a covenant with the children of Israel. So can he, if he breaks his covenant, I mean, he will break his covenant if he gives the oracles to someone else to go to the children of Israel. That's breaking his covenant, right? Let's see and his, his word. Let's go see that. Let's go to uh let's go to Ezekiel. I'm sorry, let's go to Amos, the third chapter. Amos, the third chapter. That contradicts what he actually said, brothers and sisters. Ezekiel, the third, uh, I mean, Amos, the third chapter. I'm sorry. Amos, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse one. Amos, the third chapter, and we are going to start at verse one. Amos, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse one. And verse 1 reads, hear this, hear, hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known out of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. You only have I known. You only. Right. So let's just see if the you only means he has not dealt with anybody else concerning his instructions, concerning his judgments and his statutes, his Torah. Right. Let's go to Ezekiel, the one, uh, uh, the 47 chapter. Ezekiel 47. And we are going to start. I'm sorry, not Ezekiel. Um, um, Psalms 47. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms 47, and we are going to start 147. Psalms 147. Hey, forgive me, brothers and sisters. Psalms 147, so we can be clear. And we're going to start at verse 19. Psalms 147, and we are going to start at verse 19. So this is going to kill the fact that Muhammad was bringing a pure message which it also said that this was the new light to replace this, right? Because this is no longer necessary if we have the Quran, brothers and sisters, right? Psalms 147 and verse 19. Verse 19 reads, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as far as and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. It even said that they in the history that they didn't have the Arabs didn't have a tradition of their own. They had no structure of their own, brothers and sisters, when Muhammad brought them the Quran. Right? So then the Quran is still pointing to the children of Israel. Message being sent to the children of Israel, brothers and sisters, when the actual uh, 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 book that they reference it from says that that the God of Israel have not dealt so in any other nation concerning his word, right? Let us go see another witness to that. Now let's go to Romans, the third chapter, right? Now it says he had not dealt so with any nation. So how can a heathen... Why is Gabriel going to the heathen when God said this, right? And he hasn't gone to an Israelite first to give it to Muhammad so that he could come back to the Torah and the Gospels. He didn't do that. He made his own thing up, brothers and sisters, right? He made up his own thing. Where are we going? We're going to Romans, the um, third chapter. Romans, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Romans, the third chapter, and we are going to start at verse 1. Oh, it's going, we, we're not finished, uh, brothers and sisters. It's going to get deep. 
We are not finished. Romans, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Romans 3 and verse 1. And verse 1 reads, What advantage then hath a Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision, much in much every way, excuse me, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God, to the Jew was, or to the Israelite, was committed the oracles of God, brothers and sisters, to the Jew, right? Let's go confirm that once again. It's all through the law and the testimony, and it will contradict this. There is no reason to have this, brothers and sisters, other than trying to get people that's in this religion out of it. There's no reason to have it, right? We're going to Romans, the ninth chapter now. Romans, the ninth chapter, and we're going to start at verse 3. Romans, the ninth chapter, and we are going to start at verse 3. Let's see what this says. Romans 9 and verse 3. And verse 3 where it reads, For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law, not the Ishmaelites, brothers and sisters, but the Israelites, right? and the service of God, and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever, amen. This is the gospel, brothers and sisters, right? This is the gospel. And it is contradicting the, 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 the Torah, or the law in the testimony is contradicting the gospel the Quran, right? And it's really going to, it's really going to contradict in a minute. And we're coming up upon it, brothers and sisters, right? It is contradicting it, right? And it makes it seem like the Most High don't want to save his people in here. Like this is past tense, right? Not that it's future tense, but let's go see the future tense, brothers and sisters, that is happening even today. We see the great awakening of the children of Israel, brothers and sisters, and it's not due to the Quran, brothers and sisters. The Quran been around a long time. People have been reading the Quran a long time, right? We're just now getting the real understanding of the Bible because the children of Israel are now waking up. Because other than that, you had the Sunday church doctrine. That's what you had. You didn't have this at all. You had the Quran. You had the uh, Judaism with the uh, Babylonian Talmud and the uh, uh, third century Talmud coming all the way down to the centuries. That's what you had with the, uh, the, the, the Abrahamic religions. You never had the real oracles of God being preached to you, right? So we got to kill all of these books and make everybody understand that this is all you need, brothers and sisters. This is all you need is some history to back it up, to gain salvation and get into the kingdom, which is in Jerusalem, not Mecca. So we got we got to correct all of this, brothers and sisters, right? Let's go to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Ezekiel 37, and we are going to start at verse 1. Ezekiel 37, and we are going to start at verse 1, right? Making it seem like, like I said, he don't want to wake his children up, brothers and sisters, right? Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. And verse 1 reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out to the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, right? Of course, people, we've always heard about the valley of the dry bones, talking about Israel and being in their uh, dead state spiritually, right? Let's continue. Verse 2, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, 
hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. So he's coming after his people, brothers and sisters. He wants to purify his people, brothers and sisters, right? We know two thirds ain't going to make it. But that one third, he wants to purify his people. This makes it seem like he don't want to do it at all. We tried to do it, but y'all wouldn't listen. No, he going to keep his covenant until all generations. Whoever listens to him, he going to pick up. He going to bring into the land, brothers and sisters, right? Let's skip down to verse 11. And verse 11 reads, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, uh, the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off from, uh, we are cut off for our parts. Oh man, this going to make me feel like I can't, <laughs> I can't do nothing about it. The way it's talking about the children of Israel, right? They already feeling like we don't have hope and that our parts are cut off or our bands asunder, they, uh, they cut our cords off, right? cut our ability to go back to the Torah or the law and the testimony, brothers and sisters, right? That's what they think they got cut off, but we are returning back to our heritage, brothers and sisters, right? Verse 12, therefore prophesy un and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, uh, O my people, I will uh, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel, right? So he's going to perform this work, brothers and sisters, and bring us back to the land of Israel by instructing us with the law and the testimony, not the Quran. We don't need the Quran. The law and the testimony and following Christ. That's all you need, brothers and sisters. That is all you need, right? Now, we got three more places after that. Let's go back to this, the last place in this, and let's see something. Now we're going to Surah, the 22nd chapter. Surah, the 22nd chapter. And we are going to start at verse 33. Watch this. <clears throat> Sir, uh, a surah, the 22nd chapter in verse 33. And it reads, in these cattle for sacrifice, I want y'all to listen. In these cattle for sacrifice, you have benefits, the meat, hide, etc. for a fixed time. In the end, their place of sacrifice is near the ancient house. And to every nation and people, we have appointed rites of sacrifice so that they might celebrate the name of Allah over the food he gave them from animals fit for sacrifice. I want y'all to pay attention to that, right? He gave them food fit for sacrifice, talking about Allah. But your God is one Allah. Then submit your will to him in Islam and you give the good news to those who humble themselves before Allah. To those whose hearts are filled with fear, when the name of Allah is mentioned, and whom show patience, steadfastness over their sorrows, perform regular prayer and spend in charity from what we have given to them. Watch this, brothers and sisters. Verse 36. We have made for you the camels for sacrifice. The camels that are made for, that this is food fit for sacrifice is camels, brothers and sisters. So you have made the camels for sacrifice as among the symbols of Allah. In them there is much good for you. Then pronounce the name of Allah over them that they line up for sacrifice. Then when they are down on their sides after the slaughter, you eat you eat there, uh, there from and feed those who live in contentment. So you go, according to Allah, brothers and sisters, you are going to feed them camels for sacrifice? Is this the same as the God of Israel? You're going to feed them camels for sacrifice, right? So uh, let, let's continue. You're going to feed them those who live in contentment, but who do not beg and those who beg with due humility. Thus we have made animals and your 
uh, at your command so that you may be thankful. Neither is there meat nor their blood that reaches Allah. It is your devotion to Allah that reaches him. He has thus made them at your command for you may glorify Allah for his guidance to you and declare the good news that all who do right. A camel is meat for sacrifice, brother and sister. A camel. A camel. Right? I'm, I'm going to keep saying that. A camel, brothers and sisters, <laughs> that you may eat, right? And then they'll, they'll sacrifice the blood of the camel or the flesh, the meat of the camel to Allah. And that's meat fit for sacrifice according to the command of Allah, right? Now, let's go see if that's in the Bible, right? Let's go to Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Leviticus, the 11th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Remember, a camel is fit for sacrifice, brothers and sisters. A camel. Leviticus, the 11th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Leviticus, the 11th chapter, and we are going to start at verse 1. Leviticus 11 and verse 1. And verse 1 reads, and the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Let's see if camel is meat for sacrifice and consumption, right? Whosoever parteth the hoof and is cloven-footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that, uh, that ye shall eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divideth the hoof. Let's see what the first one is, brothers and sisters. As a camel. <laughs> the, first, the first unclean animal on the list of Leviticus 11 is a camel. But this says that the camel was made fit for sacrifice and eating. You see what I'm saying? That will kill your salvation. And this is, I'm going to show that's going to kill your salvation, right? So the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you, brothers and sisters. Let's, uh, this is what God is saying. Let's skip down to verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hoof and is cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, uh, cud, he is unclean unto you, Right? So their sacrifice, according to the Quran, you can sacrifice unclean beasts to Allah. Right? This is what we're going to use. This, this, this belongs with this, with it saying this. That's what it, come on, brothers and sisters, it don't make no sense, right? And we're going to make sure we kill all of this to make sure our people understand that the Quran is not your book. It's barely the book of the Arabs because it's talking about the children of Israel. Right? Constantly talking about the children of Israel. So we know that this is not the same God. Because this God says that camels are unclean to you. But this God says that it's meat fit for sacrifice and eating. Right? So that's two totally different schools of thought, brothers and sisters. Let's go confirm that with the last place. Isaiah the 66th chapter. Isaiah the 66th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 3. Isaiah, the 66th chapter, and we are going to start at verse 3. Isaiah 66 and verse 3. Isaiah 66 and verse 3. Last place, brothers and sisters. And verse 3 reads, He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's head, uh, neck, cut off a dog's neck. He that offer oblations. Now you see oblations is sacrifice, brothers and sisters. It says he that offer oblations as if he offered swine's blood. The reason why I read swine in the uh, uh, dietary law is because swine's blood and oblation is in here. Versus in here is the camel. So I read the camel to show you that they are synonymously unclean, brothers and sisters, right? So you cannot sacrifice 
a camel to Allah, just like you cannot sacrifice swine's blood. Uh, well, you can sacrifice a camel to Allah, but you can't sacrifice swine's blood or the, the swine to the God of Israel for sacrifice, right? What, what did he say it was? He said, he that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. He's using all these comparisons to show you that this is bogus, right? Then what it says, yea, they have chosen their own ways and their soul delighted in their abominations. So guess what, brothers and sisters? Remember what I said, Muhammad wrote this. Muhammad wrote this. Now, according to this, this is showing that Muhammad chose his own way and he delighted in the abomin in the, his own abominations. This is showing you that with the text, brothers and sisters, right? Let's continue. Verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delight not. Showing that if you sacrifice swine's blood for oblation, that is evil in the sight of the Lord. So if that's the case, sacrificing a camel is evil in the sight of the Lord God of Israel. But I thought Allah was the same God, brothers and sisters. Right? That's an e easy kill. Easy kill, brothers and sisters. Now, let's let's go kill it. Let's, let's do the finale, right? Let's skip down to verse uh, 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 16. I'm sorry. Let's get down to verse 15. <clears throat> verse 15. Verse 15 reads, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination, which we know a camel is an abomination, brothers and sisters, and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Consumed means killed, brothers and sisters, or destroyed together for eating swine's flesh, for eating the abomination, or for sacrificing camels or swine as the oblation to the Lord God of Israel. Right? This is evil. So this is evil in the sight of the Lord, brothers and sisters, and we must understand that this is not the same as the scriptures according to the scriptures. You are choosing your own way, brothers and sisters, when you do this, when you follow this. You're choosing your own way, and you delight in your abominations, brothers and sisters, and you are doing evil in the sight of the Lord. That is what's happening. So, get these scriptures together. There is many more scriptures in here, brothers and sisters. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's many more scriptures here. So, brothers and sisters, in conclusion, I would say no. This is not the same according to the scriptures. And Allah and the God of Israel have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with each other. As we read in the history, you have a hermaphrodite God when it comes to this book, right? I thank you for your time, brothers and sisters. I really hope y'all was edified. Once again, we're, we're going to show all these religions are vain. And like the Bible said, all tables are full of vomit where there is no place clean. And the Quran ain't clean, brothers and sisters. It just ain't, right? So tune in once again. I am Cash is Israel or Shazak Ben Yehuda I'm from the Walls of Jericho Biblical and Historical Studies, Hebrews in the Hood Entertainment, brothers and sisters. And I thank you for your time. Shalom. And this, <laughs> this definitely was enjoyable. We're going to keep it up. Shalom to you.